Uh, it's uh, always good to be flat on. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, very yes, good. Yes, sir. You uh, can start the class. Good morning, everybody. Okay. Uh, you are uh, all of you are doing good without being bogged down by uh, Corona and the effects of uh, Corona in uh, every place. Right. Uh, so. Uh, structure of, of today's class would be something like this. I have been asked to do, uh, in fact, I, I have been asked to continue wherever we had left last time, a uh, week or so ago. And we are doing uh, accents and also, so we'll continue from the remaining part of the accent and also uh, accent. And I think uh, the second unit we would be doing is MTI, mother tongue uh, influence. So uh, first thing first. Uh, I'm not going to uh, check with you whether you remember what I did last time uh, because that uh, everybody might escape telling that uh, you are uh, bogged down with uh, Corona and all those and therefore uh, test and assessment kind of thing won't work now. I understand that and I will not be testing or assessing that. But then ju just to just to uh, give you a brief of, of what we uh, did in the in a couple of uh, sessions before this one, about one and a half weeks or so ago, we started understanding what accent is. Uh, accent, if you if you remember what accent or what stress we call, either both of them are same, by the way, uh, depending on the context. So word accent or word stress are those things, those emphasis, special emphasis, or relative really special emphasis given on a particular, on a part of a word. Uh, what if you <coughs> what you uh, know uh, is made up of maybe made up of one or more syllables. So one of the in a polysyllabic words, those are words having more than one syllable, two or more. One of the uh, syllables gets accented or stressed on relative stress on one of the syllables, and that's what we call stress. Now the the function, the the basic purpose of word stress is to because English uh, is a stress time uh, language, which is why uh, we have a beats at regular interval, intervals of time. If we didn't have uh, stress, if we didn't have accent, it would be a flat monotonous uh, language or monotonous speech, which, is, which nobody would love to uh, hear or listen. So in order to give it a rhythm, in order to give it a structure of, a, uh, of something that we can love hearing or listening to, we, we, in order to add rhythm to that, we have <coughs> stress. And this occurs at a regular interval of time, irrespective of the number Excuse of- Excuse me, time. sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, would you please be a bit, uh, speak a bit louder, your okay. voice is. Oh, fine, fine. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, no problem. <coughs> so uh, the relative accent determines that, uh, or make sure that the words occur at regular stress occurs at regular interval, intervals of time. And the, uh, irrespective of the number of syllables or words, because it, uh, at a time, at, at, at some point in time, there might be three syllables also, which you may get, in which you get one of the, them get accented. In another case, uh, half of the word, the another syllable also may get accented. So that's how it, it doesn't depend on the number of syllables that you have in a line or so. So that's, that's basically, the purpose of accent. And, and the, the accent, word accent, or word stress keeps changing depending on the function. Uh, if, you, if you know again, uh, and I don't see any reason why you should not have learned it by now, because this is, this is what you would have done <laughs> even in, in your undergraduate BA honors uh, stage. So uh, uh, knowing it fully well that you would have got it then, or even in the first semester or whenever you did your MA English. So it would be uh, appropriate for me to conclude that you are aware of all the rules. But Excuse uh, me, sir. Sir, you are not audible. You are not at all audible, sir. Even you can look through the chat speech, all are writing that. Please raise your volume. Now, uh, it's okay now. Okay, good. Maybe there was something in the <laughs> Okay. No, sir. No, sir. Fine, fine. 
<coughs> sorry so uh, the the accent or the the pattern of of accent or space changes depending on the on the function or role each word or each vocabulary uh, performs every word in english has a different role has a different purpose has has a different uh, function to do depending on that function the accent also keeps changing uh, let's let's uh, say for example most of the word most of the nouns and adjectives they are accented in the first syllable and and uh, verbs are a list second or subsequent syllables so that's a that's a, a flat rule there are exceptions though and in english uh, in english is one of those languages which you sorry was not audible even now okay so uh, when when the words are accented when uh, a, a particular word is accented a particular syllable in a word is accented it it also uh, determines the the function it tells us about the role that the word plays or performs so that uh, those are uh, flat rules now coming to the uh, rules with regard to accent patterns or uh, space patterns in english a change in accent the syllables in derivatives and I'll, I'll, I'll share this screen okay that will that will maybe uh, help you okay give me a moment Okay, you're uh, you're able to see the see the screen now. Hello. You're able to see the screen. Yes, sir. It's visible. Yes, yes, sir. PPT, you are able to see. You are able to see the PPT. Yes. Ah, good. Okay. Uh, so, uh, change in the accent is syllable in derivatives. Uh, those words which we derive from an existing word. So, let's say one example, one set of examples I have given here. Uh, if you are not able to hear me, at least you can see this, uh, the PPT. Uh, so, academy, for instance, academy is a noun, and the adjective form of that is academy. So, there the stress is on the demi, so academic. And uh, the Another noun form derived out of that is academician. So there, it, uh, the space is on me. So academy, academician, academic, and academician. Similarly, advertise and advertisement. Similarly, examine or examinee or examination or inferior or inferiority. Then photograph, photographer, photographic or politics, political, nutrition or one more word responsible or responsibility ability is the is this part of the word is this syllable in which the word is accented the, uh, the syllable is accented a, and another set of examples that we can we can uh, i can show you excuse me sir yes. i would request the learner who all are facing the problem regarding the volume one by one please to say it to the resource person so that he would be looking into the matter so who uh, one by one please i would request the learner to kindly inform the resource person that uh, those of uh, facing the problem regarding the volume please do convey the message to the resource person so that he would be acting on it right prashant kumar prashant kumar deep i would request you to kindly Briefly talk to the resource person regarding the volume issue so that he can look into the matter, right? He must know that his voice is not at all audible. So, please do. I would request the learners to kindly uh, interact with the resource person, right? Okay. Uh, now, uh, What's wrong with this? You should be able to hear. Hmm. 
हेलो हेलो सो प्लीज डू लेकिन विद द मैटर योर वॉइस इज नॉट एट ऑल ऑडिबल Sir, would you mind to resolve the issue because your voice is not at all audible? Hello, sir. Ah. Please avoid the yes, sir. Sir, please ah. louding the voice. Okay, okay. Uh, so now it is clear. Please okay. avoid the yes, sir. Ah, okay, okay. There was uh, something was wrong. Now it is clear, sir. Now it is clear. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because when everybody started asking that we were not able to hear, I found uh, I discovered two things. Uh, because I am known for uh, talking loud, so therefore I had doubt on my own ability. That was the first thing. And second thing, I had doubt on the uh, internet or the or the technique or the technology, uh, which is of course possible. But uh, okay, now it's it's good that you are able to hear. Okay, now right. it is clear, sir. Very good. Good. Uh, Thank okay. you. Sir. now uh, whatever i was sharing uh, i i think you are you had a look at that so the uh, ppt that i was sharing <coughs> sorry ha huh, the ppt that i was sharing contained the list of uh, words which the in in which you have uh, wait ha huh. okay uh, there there was a i showed you a list of words uh, which keep changing in which the uh, stress or the accent keep changing depending on the function that each of those words uh, are used as one of the uh, examples i gave you initially without even showing the uh, ppt was that a simple example of a of nouns nouns and or adjective is one group and the verbs another group in case of nouns Uh, it's it's always invariably always though there are a, a couple of a few exceptions invariably always they are stressed in the first syllable and in case of verbs they are in the second or the subsequent syllable now that that's one clue that can always give us an idea a hint of where uh, words are stressed or what what function that word is used as uh, the 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 number of words that we have in english all of them can be categorized or grouped into into various parts of speech uh, noun pronoun adjective then verbs adverbs and then conjunctions interjections and all those now all those eight parts of speech which means any of those words that you choose that you uh, encounter can fall under any of those groups and 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 the accent or word stress or word accent functions uh, can help us can help us identify or understand the the function that each of those uh, words plays right now coming back to uh, coming back to the presentation part coming back to the list of words that are used or that change their role change their accent depending on the role or the function they uh, each of them does the first set of examples i gave you if you didn't hear me then because there was some problem with the audio uh, let's do it all over again uh, change in the accented syllables in derivatives now academy is one word academy is is the noun form where the stress is in the first syllable or oh, is a weak word of course weak form so it's it stressed on k academy then uh, the adjective form of that word is pandemic so it's it's stressed on demic and the third form of that another noun form out of the academic is academician similarly advertise is one word and the other form of that is a noun form of that is advertisement so this is how then examine is is a word where stressed it on a examine and examine uh, stressed it on ne and then this is how the photograph photographer 
photographic or or politics political politician and this is how the words keep changing the stress pattern keeps changing then nouns or adjectives are accented in the syllable uh, in the first syllable and verbs in the second syllable these are the these are some of the words i have listed it down here uh, and they are let's say noun if you say let's say absent right it's if, if so uh, that's in the noun excuse me sir it, can you put it to zoom it sir can you can you put it in the full screen to the projector okay wait 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 present now okay entire screen good and this and share okay is okay now no not yet it's coming Hmm. Research will be done. Okay. And then. Ah, uh, okay. Give me a minute. This uh, there's something wrong with this uh, sharing. It's not getting shared. Hello. Okay, sir. Okay, okay sir. Okay. Sir, give me two minutes, sir. Eh? Sorry. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. ओके शेयर नहीं थैंक यू सर ओके but they'll also be able to see themselves so beats the purpose mm hmm acha uh, hello sir ah yeah it's sir visible. now it's visible it's visible now yes okay. sir please continue sit and see yes sir no audio uh, you are able to hear yes sir yes sir ah very good so uh, here is a list of words in which we uh, see how they are accented depending on their function or the role so nouns and adjectives are accented in the first syllable and verbs in the second syllable so let's say uh, digest is a verb so we we digest our food or export uh, in if it's used as a verb we use india exports diamonds to to other countries but when we use it as a noun uh, export so the uh, china makes a lot of money in its uh, from its exports so they are its noun similarly uh, object i object your honor is verb 
but there is no there is the excuse me sir the contents are not visible to us contents are not visible yes sir 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 hello sir you, you told you to... sir your presentation is in mute mode please unmute your presentation uh, okay i don't know why wait 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 i think it's now sir click on the clear. ppt eh now it's clear sir you are able to see clear the ppt but, sir clear but uh, it's on mute it can't scroll oh. uh, but you don't have to scroll I, i'll do that for you it's okay 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 you don't okay. have to okay sir ah. okay that oh, that's what you were asking that's fine that's fine you just have a look at this screen you don't have to scroll you don't have to do anything as long as you are able to hear me and and see this ppt that's fine okay so that's uh, the other, other word is let's say uh, object as a verb i object your honor is verb but the object of this class is to is to give you valuable inputs on accent let's say similarly permit uh, he got a permit to to run uh, a shop or a uh, verb is he was permitted to go out of the campus similarly uh, convict so he was he was convicted in the case is a verb but the, the 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 let's say when we use it as a noun we will say the convict is uh, trying to escape the jail fine another uh, set of words compound words where words are made up of two or more uh, nouns or other forms of words together and they they form they are compound nouns or compound words now in compound words in uh, in this this set of compound words the first syllables are accented first elements are accented so let's say air raid or blackbird or a bookshelf or cardboard or coalman crossword footprint in in these words the first elements are accented but there is another set of compound words where they are formed with the with the end in ever or self they are accented on the endings so herself he herself she she herself did it or he himself is to blame blame for this or themselves they themselves came all the way or however uh, it's is uh, not a good sign or whatever may be may be the case we will still have the class or whoever has done this will get uh, due punishment so that's how they are these are accented in the second elements in the first set of words we saw was getting stressed on the first element okay another set of compound words where both elements are accented when there are both uh, stress or accent we call them primary accent and secondary accent so primary accent uh, we we put a small uh, diacritic mark before the word or the syllable on the top and secondary accent uh, accent or secondary stress are put below the uh, word and and that's how we distinguish the primary and the secondary accent so let's say afternoon so when we say in another uh, half an hour we will say good afternoon or he is a bad tempered man or uh, this he is a good looking person or this this uh, cheese is homemade or we are post graduates in english right or uh, the the vice chancellor uh, is planning to visit the campus today so that's how we use accent on both the primary and secondary accents on both the cases in these compound words and uh, the 
words with weak prefixes. There are words with strong prefixes and weak prefixes. In case of this, the example that I have given here, uh, they are weak prefixes. Words or the, the parts of the words that are parts of the words or parts of syllable maybe, they are added to a root word and they become, um, they form a new word. And these weak, in case of weak syllables, weak prefixes, the accent is always on the main word and not on the, not on the part of the uh, prefix that is added to the word to make a new, to form a new word. So a board, uh, let's say uh, they, while, while, while uh, 40 people perished uh, uh, on board a plane, if you rephrase that, it will be something like uh, aboard, aboard a plane, uh, 30, 30 or 40, 40 people were, were, were perished or were, were found to have corona or something. Similarly, abroad uh, or ahead, they are uh, doing, they are going ahead of us or he was left all alone to himself or because of, of corona, everything has now come to a standstill or become uh, or below, it's below his dignity to, uh, to do this or beneath. So in, in all these words, because they are, the prefixes are weak, we put the accent of the syllable in the root word. Then uh, that was, then the, the next series of words, next set of words are uh, inflectional suffixes. So words ending in past tense or plurals or, or third form, ES and all those. So let's say recommend or recommended, they don't change. They, they remain the same. So in the word recommend also, you have the stress on the uh, syllable mend or in the past tense also recommended uh, or relate or related. Similarly, S or ES, so disease or diseases or focus, focuses or success, successes or happen, happening or reason, reasoning. All they remain the they remain same. There there is no change in the in the accent pattern in the in the pattern of accent, irrespective of whether <coughs> they are uh, past tense or uh, used in the third person singular form or in the ing form, the simple present progressive form, present or past progressive form. Irrespective of them, the uh, accent remains the same. Another set of words, derivational suffixes. Say, for example, ending in A-G-E or, or A-N-C-E or E-N or E-R and all those. The list is there for you to see. If you feel like you can take notes, uh, otherwise you listen to this and then also can make a mental note of that. Uh, choice is yours. So let's say in a word like carry, carry as a verb. So we, we carry a lot of burden or noun form of that would be carriage. So again, it remains the same. The, Accent, the word stress does not change uh, whether it's a noun or verb in these cases. Similarly, hermit and hermitage or annoy or annoyance, or pure, appearance or brighten, bright, brighten. Similarly, uh, when we change the, uh, let's say feminine gender from, from uh, male to female, right, masculine to feminine, so author, authoress or adjective like beauty, beautiful, or, or another adjective form from white, whitish, or noun form of another word by ending ENT, M-E-N-T and all those, achieve, achievement, or manage, management, or nest, when we add nest to a word, it also forms another noun. So uh, bitter is, a, is, is an adjective, but then noun form that becomes bitterness or lovely adjective noun form of that would be loveliness so that's how the root whatever we put stress whatever part we put stress on they remain constant they don't change even when we change the word from one form to another by adding all these uh, parts like a g e a n c e uh, u r e t e r and all those Every, everybody able to hear now? Is it okay now? Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I can feel the happiness uh, in, in the, uh, a, during those, those few moments, it was frustration. Now, now it's okay. Now happiness is brimming. Okay. Uh, words ending in I-O-N, 
they take the primary action on the penultimate. Penultimate is the last bot one. Ultimate is the last one, just before that, last bot one. Uh, penultimate syllable. So admiration or application or determination or station or preparation and all those. Similarly, uh, words ending in I C I C A L I C A L L Y I O U S and all those. They also they take the primary accent on the syllable preceding the suffix. Whatever suffix we are talking of now, I C I C A L, just before that, whatever uh, <laughs> suffix and uh, the word. The accent is put on the part of the word, part of the syllable, before the these suffixes like I C, I C A L, I A L, I A L L Y, and other things. So let's say apologetic, or terrific, or sympathetic, or biological, or optical, psychological, or or uh, psychologically, or memorial, or confidentiality. So in all these cases, you see the accent is put on the syllables preceding the ending, preceding the suffixes listed just now. Words ending in IPY take the accent on the antepenultimate or the third syllable from the end. Ultimate is the last one, penultimate is the second from last, and third syllable from the end if you see a, if you take a word uh, they count from the uh, back side and then the on the third syllable accent is put on the third syllable in such cases where the words end in ity so let's say ability or electricity or magnanimity or opportunity or rationality so the the accents are put on these these syllables on the syllable third from left Third from left in the cases where words end in ity, right? Okay. Just just uh, let's let's have a uh, let's sum up what we did in, in accent, and then we'll go to the other other unit that we thought of doing today. By the end of this this hour, by the end of this session, we would have done at least two units. So one of them uh, is the is accent, and the other one is mother tongue influence. Now, accent, since I had done some some part of the, this in the previous classes, I did not uh, think of think of the necessity, feel the necessity of doing it all over again. So just some important things, important points I touched upon for you to recall and, and remember uh, how how accents, uh, what are accents, number one, number two, how they determine the, the function, they determine what function or what purpose a word uh, is used as and third the list of words or the examples uh, that that we can cite to to show uh, that these are the cases in which words word accents or word stress uh, changes now whenever we make a statement any statement for that matter uh, not only uh, with regard to english or english phonetics any statement anywhere even if it's not science has to be has supported by uh, instances examples and and uh, illustrations otherwise they won't stand the test in order for you to make a statement and establish the veracity of that statement that okay whatever i said whatever i uh, whatever statement i made is true uh, because of the following reasons so in order to establish the veracity of a statement that you make you need to scaffold it with with illustrations and examples uh, and the more the examples the better will be the reinforcement and that's why I tried giving you a list of words in those uh, slides to to show that that uh, the function of uh, syllable function of stress word stress governs it uh, is governed by the uh, way by the place we put the accent right and those words uh, whatever words that I showed you they are an illustrative list of that there are there are a lot more words of course and and uh, that, that you can maybe uh, have a look at the at the book for, at your at your leisure uh, whenever you are free or whenever you have time to get and to get a clear idea of how uh, accent or word stress is used and the course materials that igno uh, provides you i i believe they give you the text uh, materials also the course materials are of very high standard and uh, you can have a look at that just to because this is just uh, the series of lectures are, are to, to make you understand, to make you see how things develop 
or how things unfold. But then you also need to go through the books, uh, relevant portions and all those to understand in its entirety. Because in a class of an hour and a half or an hour and a quarter, you can't cover the entire syllabus of, of one uh, unit or one uh, course. So these are, these are just meant to, to give you an, an idea or maybe to guide you to how you should uh, go about doing, how you should understand things, how you should uh, make, make, uh, make sure that a particular word falls under a particular group or class and category. Right. Good. So uh, that's that's uh, that's all about about uh, word stress accent and all those. Now let's have a let's have a look look at the uh, mother tongue influence. Mother tongue MTI. We call that mother tongue influence. Now all of you again are also aware. This I'll close and then open the new. Okay. Uh, uh, this the other file I'll just uh, share and then we'll see how I international all of you are aware right we we had done that uh, a, a couple of classes before and uh, that should have been abundantly clear I don't see any reason why uh, uh, international should be a, a problem for you, but in case you feel uh, that you need that, we can always get back to this, uh, right? Okay, you are able to see the, the screen. Hello. Hello. Hello, sir. Uh, you are able to see the screen. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, good. Oh, great. Now, mother tongue influence. Uh, mother tongue influence basically, or MTI, we call it MTI also uh, in brief. Oh. Hey. Uh, mother tongue influence or MTI is the impact of the way your mother tongue, or my mother tongue also for that matter, is spoken on English you are trying to learn. Now, look, there are, there are two issues. First one, all of us, you, I, and everybody, we are born with a certain tongue that we inherit from our mother. And that, that we are very comfortable with that because we, we start using that from our, from day one, from the day we start speaking, right? I'm not even talking, suggesting formal speaking. It can be any, just talking also, blabbering also. It can be anything. Now, from that, from that time on, till we go to the grave, we keep using the mother tongue and therefore we become comfortable and we of the couple so we can we can tell anything without following without uh, having to follow the rules of of the language without without having to uh, read and and study and then see how they are applied and all those things that's that's basically because that we we see uh, because we are are used to that la language uh, and and the, therefore therefore uh, we, we are not troubled by, or we are not, uh, we not, don't make a conscious effort of, of learning that lang language and uh, using it in context. We know what to use, how to use, what to use, and all those. And therefore, in very rare cases, we falter and we, we might, might commit mistakes. But generally, all of us, we are very comfortable with mother tongue. Now, when it comes to learning another tongue, other tongue, English, in our case, it's English. When it comes to learning another tongue, they, there are so many factors that govern or that influence or that come to play. The first thing is, the, the first one is that whatever language that we have learned, acquired by the way, it's not learning, whatever language that we have acquired, mother tongue in, the, in our case, the first language or Oriya, that will have a bearing that will influence 
in the manner in which we use or learn English, right? That's, that's one small factor. There are many other variables also. Uh, the biggest first thing is on learning, learning one language, learning or acquiring that language will, will have a bearing in the language that we, that we try to learn English. In this case, the target language is English. The other, other cases could be, could be because we are not born with or we are not used to acquire that language, we will make a conscious effort to learn and English will, will impact, uh, Odia, our mother tongue will impact our learning of that language. And, and so in, in case of, in, uh, with regard to vocabulary, with, with regard to pronunciation, with regard to sentence structure, with regard to usage, with regard to syntax, with regard to semantics, it can be anything. It can be, by the way, by the way, uh, when we learn a language, when we, when we try to learn a language, these four factors govern our learning, the effectiveness of the learning of our of, of the target language, right? And therefore, there are four four conditions that we must fulfill in order to make a sentence acceptable. I'm not even telling that it has to be a standard. It has to be a standard sentence. It has to be one of the best sentences. I'm not even suggesting that. Just to make it acceptable, you have to fulfill all these four conditions. So first one is is grammar. Right. Okay, we'll go in that order. So syntax, first one is syntax. Arrangement of words in a sentence. That a word, that a sentence, in any sentence, in this case, English, we are talking of English, the uh, order must be subject, verb, and object. If there is an object, if there is no object, then it's, it's uh, uh, perfect that the, the verb is, a, is a non-intransitive, and therefore you don't need an object. So that's also fine. Whether you have a verb, we have an object or not, but you have to have a verb. So subject, verb, object, object. That's the order. So that's the syntax. Then <coughs> grammar. It follows rules of grammar. That is, if if the sentence has a if, if the uh, sentence has a singular noun and the verb is in the present tense, if the number is singular, so singular, then present tense, and person is third person then it takes S or ES. So we say he speaks English well. Now he, because this is third person singular and because speak, we are using it in the present tense. So it takes S or ES and that becomes speaks. He speaks English. But then, but then if, you, if you replace he with something else, with somebody else, a plural or he or she, he and she or they or people or students, then it becomes, they, because it's a plural noun, therefore the verb also uh, doesn't take s or es and they become so they speak english and that's that's uh, just one of the rules i suggested i gave an example of okay so that's you have now syntax second one you have grammar third you have vocabs words lexis we call the lexis also l-e-x-i-s is singular l-e-x-e-s is plural like plural of basis is basis plural of right crisis is crisis and all those so in this case it's is lexis uh, you have words uh, one of the one of the basic uh, fundamental definitions of a sentence is that it must have words. Right? We in 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 school also we we read rules of grammar, a definition of a sentence that a sentence is made up of made up of a number of words. That's the one condition. Of course, we can have still sentence with one word like uh, yes or go or come, but those are very exceptional cases and they are contextual. In isolation, they cannot be uh, termed as a sentence. If you, if you enter a class and if you seek the permission of the teacher, may I come in? Or if you want to meet your controller or director and if you say, uh, may I come in? He or she might ask you, yes. Now that yes in isolation may, is not a sentence. That's in, a, in that context, in response to your question, may I come in sir or madam? That yes is a, is a, is a complete statement, right? In isolation, it's not. Similarly, you, you go or come, you some, tell somebody, go. So that's, the, the, that's again, it's in, in context, it's not in isolation. Okay, so words. Words form sentences. It may have two words, it may have 10 words. Okay, so you have now lexis or vocabs, you have syntax, you have grammar. Fourth, most important is semantics. Semantics is the meaning part of a sentence. When you have in a, when you form a sentence, when you write a sentence, speak a sentence, use a sentence, 
it again another condition of a definition of the sentence also is that it must be meaningful it must have words a sentence is made up of words is one second condition is it must be meaningful you can't make you can't arrange any words any way you like any number of words in any manner you like and form a sentence even a complex sentence also you cannot it has to have some meaning it has to have some meaning let us say for example a very ordinary sentence i'll give you to to put things in perspective if you say cows eat grass cool okay now when you say now that's a subject cow is a subject in this case noun also and then you have eats because this is third person singular and therefore you are using that in the present tense eats and then grass is another object in this case another noun in this case is object so you have as vo exact now if you if you change the order also the grammaticality still remains perfect you say grass eats cows that's perfectly nothing wrong with this except that it does not make sense now you would ask me uh, why why doesn't it make sense it does it does we have seen uh, flowers like rafflesia that's one of the that's the largest flower in the world by the way rafflesia eating they can eat an uh, animal they can eat an animal so yes so what's wrong with that no that's again an exceptional case one one in a billion maybe happening that one it's not a, a regular it's not a not something that happen, happens to us or that we encounter in our day to day life so grass cannot eat cows basically because it's not a living organism again if you say if you go to the definition of a living organism uh, dr jc bose for instance uh, would would not agree with you he might frown at you telling how can you say grass is lifeless grass i see is a living organism because he saw life even in plants in fact he established that by showing by giving us experiments how trees grow flowers the um, buds become flowers flowers become fruits and trees grow he showed us a uh, scientific manner the growth and you you also would have seen that yesterday you saw a flower you saw a small flower and today a bud maybe and today it has been blossomed into a full flower or a leaf you saw a couple of days ago it was very small but now three days later you see the leaves are full or <clears throat> the tree uh, after the uh, fall after the fall had been almost barren uh, leafless a few weeks later maybe three weeks later you see the tree full of beautiful green flower leaves so that's a sign of growth we know that it's living and one of the again uh, characteristic features of any living being any living organism is that it's born so okay leaves are born right uh, trees are born like man is born like cows are born like Uh, viruses are born everything so they are born second second thing they grow right so you see they grow so from uh, yesterday wherever you had seen that in the next 24 hours you would see them grow that okay they would have grown in stature in size in color in shape so all those their growth then they grow old they become old the trees also they become they grow old animals also they grow old man also becomes old and all those okay finally they die right after 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 they they grow up after they grow old a certain stage comes where everybody comes to an end comes to everybody meets death and everybody dies and trees also are no exception cows are also no exception so they die and after that one more thing happens after somebody dies or something dies in this case a tree also they decompose right uh, thanks to the uh, bacteria and viruses and the effects they they all those they uh, get the decompose so that's another feature so that's why dr jc bose said uh, plants or trees are also living organisms very good but then in our case for the purpose of our understanding from the perspective of language not from the point of view of biosciences or life sciences trees are not living organisms because they cannot walk they cannot move they cannot talk they cannot eat because they don't have a mouth they don't have uh, teeth to bite or, or chew they don't have tongue to taste they don't have a mouth to to gobble up something and that's why if you say uh, grass cows eat grass is perfect but then grass eats cows won't be right that's because that's because that these uh, leaves or grass grass or trees they are not living organism from our understanding from our point of view okay that's why they are they don't fulfill the conditions of meaning or semantics which is why that's not 
a sentence. Okay. Uh, any uh, anybody has anything to to ask or suggest or or, or find or say something? Hmm. Okay. So when uh, that's why another one more example I can give you how in order for a sentence to be acceptable, it must fulfill all the four conditions. It's not democracy that okay majority of the things are fulfilled sir, and therefore it can be sent no it won't be it has to fulfill all the four conditions like vocabulary or words and then semantics and then grammar and uh, syntax and grammar and semantics if it does not fulfill one of them also it ceases to be a sentence ceases to be an acceptable sentence i'll give you a small example uh, let's say i will give you one example where we can say <coughs> something like this colorless green ideas i'll type it out Okay, I'll type it out for you and have a look at this and then tell me what you feel about this. Colorless green ideas sleep furiously. Tell me what's wrong with this sentence. Hmm. Yeah, please. Hello. I would request the learners to participate in the question asked by the resource person. I have, I have texted it in the, uh, the chat box. Uh, respond to that if you like. Otherwise, we will. Can you repeat the question, please? Uh, yes. Can you repeat the question, please? Uh, I have put it in the chat, chat box. A sentence like this, colorless green ideas sleep furiously. What's wrong with this? I, I, I put it on the chat box. Have a look at that. Yeah, are you able to see the question? Yes, sir. Oh. And, and uh, you're typing out the answer, your responses to the, to the question in the text? Chat box. Acha, your take. Subhra Sarap, all these words have meanings individually, but they don't make sense in a sentence. Why? Okay, uh, let me explain. Uh, in this sentence on the uh, chat box, I've written something, a very small sentence. Colorless green ideas sleep furiously. Fine? Okay. Now let's let's dissect this sentence and then let's see how why it, it does not fulfill the conditions of becoming a becoming an acceptable sentence. Number one, if something is colorless, it can't be green. Got it? Either it's it has a color or it doesn't have a color, it can't have both. So if you say it's it's colorless and green, that defeats the purpose. Then coming to ideas. Ideas are what? Abstract nouns. Now, abstract nouns don't have colors or, or colorlessness. So abstract nouns like ideas or, or righteousness or honesty, they don't have any color. You don't say uh, he is black honesty or it's, it's white right and all those, right? So uh, it doesn't have anything. Ideas, because they're abstract, they don't have any color or colorlessness. Now coming to sleep. Sleep is a verb which, which always, which always, uh, needs a, a living organism like a human being, like a tiger. A tiger sleeps, a man sleeps, an animal sleeps. But you can't say idea sleep or 
honesty sleeps or personality sleeps and all those so somebody sleeps a tiger maybe or a cow maybe or a human being so all of us sleep because we are living organisms now coming to furiously furiously is an adverb that again is determined by this verb uh, by this verb sleep here if you sleep you can't be sleep furiously you can't sleep furiously you sleep quietly you sleep you sleep you don't have to uh, sleep furiously ha oh, he he spoke to me furiously so he got maybe angry when you told him something he reacted sharply and that's it but then we don't say he is sleeping furiously we sleeping quietly sleeping uh, sleeping silently he is sleeping deep but then we don't say he sleeps furiously that doesn't go along with the verb sleep therefore it it does not fulfill the conditions of becoming an acceptable sentence in all these cases all these each of these words is uh, uh, combined each of these words combined with the other with the next word or whatever word that related to they do not fulfill the conditions colorless and green don't go, go together colorless and colorless and green can't go together with ideas all of them can't sleep because sleep is a is a verb that requires a an active uh, living organism and furiously again is an adverb that requires something some action uh, which requires furiosity sleep is not that action it's not one of those verbs that need some furious action and which is why even if it fulfills all the conditions of grammar except semantics so you have words here you have subject verb agreement here you have the sentence beginning with a capital letter ending with a full stop all the rules it follows only condition the only thing that it does not fulfill is that it's uh, the meaning is not clear meaning is not acceptable here which is why it is not an acceptable sentence right okay so that's that's that now coming to coming to the uh, mother tongue influence our we whatever we learn or speak any other language other language a language other than mother tongue so in this case we are talking of english uh, any language other than the mother tongue that we learn will have a few things one of them is it will be influenced by the mother tongue mother tongue will overpower because we have lived with that we have we have used that language we have been using this language for as old as we are so therefore it it will have a bearing it is is natural that it will have a bearing all habits die hard we we speak a language you're born with that tongue we go on speaking we everywhere we speak at home in office everywhere and therefore that will is bound to have an influence on the language we pick up well in this case english we pick up and therefore the influence is, is bound to be immense and and the the greater the influence the uh, the more difficult or challenging more difficult or challenging it will become for us to learn that language and therefore the first uh, stage is to the first thing is to get rid of the influence now then how do we do that it's it's not a, a simple affair it's not a simple thing to to get rid of something that we which we have lived with for so many years and any anything anything you you remember anything you see anything you imagine it's it becomes almost impossible for somebody to get rid of to eliminate the the habit or the practice or the thing that we have lived with for a long long time and language is no exception and because it's a it's an active it's an activity that we uh, keep doing because all of us are social animals we live in a society we need to interact with people we need to keep chatting need to talk to people communicate to people our uh, family society community wherever we are wherever we go we need to communicate because we are we are social human social beings uh, and and therefore the language that we are born with or the language that we are comfortable using or the language that we have been using for a long time is bound to have an influence on the english and therefore uh, the uh, the influence can be such to to the extent to the ex- influence is to such an extent that it might hamper the learning of the second language or the foreign language right so therefore it it should always be our aspiration it should always be our our aim to cut down to eliminate or minimize the influence to the extent possible now elimination may not be possible initially maybe it may be very tough but then at least we can we can try to minimize you can try to cut down the influence it has on the uh, language on english so the first thing is then mti is the impact of the way your mother tongue 
the mother tongue of a person is spoken on English, you are trying to learn. So, okay, the influence that you get on the English. Second thing, it gets noticed when we are learning another language. In this case, we are talking of English. So when it, it gets, so let's say in uh, in Odia, for instance, or in Hindi, for instance, we say, bade uh, bade admi, right? Let's Mukesh Ambani and uh, Ajim Premji, although you say bade bade admi, uh, that's in Hindi. But when we trans when we use that in English also, we tend to use that big, big people, right? Big, big mangoes, big, big pumpkins. In America, they have a, they, they have a function, they, Halloween. So on that day, they celebrate that Halloween day. Uh, they they take pumpkins and then they celebrate the pumpkins and huge pumpkins. They they are, they are big, uh, 20 kg, 30 kg, even one quintal. They weigh up to one quintal also, 100 kg. Now those pumpkins, if we see, we will say big big pumpkins. Pumpkins. That's because in our mother tongue, we have been used. We have been uh, used to uh, use big big people big big pumpkin big big mangoes big big houses and all those that's one small example then pronunciation is another uh, depending on the the uh, in course of my lectures in the uh, earlier classes if you remember again i had uh, mentioned uh, that there are 44 sounds right vowels and consonants put together as against 26 letters there are 26 letters of the alphabet in english alphabet and we have 44 sounds now the which means which means that there are it's possible it's possible that there are some sounds each of those sounds or those 44 sounds they can be generated they can be created they can be pronounced by using one or more of these letters or alternatively uh, one or more letter can produce one or more sounds right so let's say in in english we have a uh, let's say a sound like sh sh like in odisha in odia it is Talabiyosu, for instance, shaw. Now, when we say shaw in, let's say, push, P-U-S-H, or shirt in, in uh, shirt, S-H in shirt, or cash, or machine, in the middle position, it's machine. In all these cases, in, in a case like shirt, or in a case like machine, or in a case like push, the shaw in all the places, all the initial, medial and final position of, of the words. That, that shaw we find, sometimes we find difficult to pronounce, not that we don't have. We have in fact three shaws as opposed to two in English. In English we have two, uh, we have one S, sa as in, as in uh, soap, another, another shaw as in shop. But in English we have three, in Odia we have three. We have Talabir shaw, we have Dantia shaw, we have Murdhya shaw. Still, in spite of that, we, we falter when it comes to, we do not differentiate. We find it difficult to differentiate among these three shots. So all of them we say, we say sart, S-H-I-R-T also we say sart, uh, S-H-O-T also we say sort, S-O-T also, S-O-U-G-S-T also we say sort. So it's it's not, we, we somehow uh, ignore either because we are oblivious of the function or purpose of that sound in that particular word or in context, either because of that or because it doesn't make much of a difference in our language. Now, in our language, in, in our daily uh, conversation, if we say uh, sat or or uh, sat or shirt and all those, it doesn't make much of a difference as long as we understand. And most of the conversations or communications are understood in, in contexts because we we talk to people we we are familiar with that's one one case family friends relatives home office colleagues peers so all those people we are familiar with and therefore they know all of us are in the same boat and therefore they don't frown they can't uh, they they don't laugh at our things and therefore we also take it for granted and we know we don't realize that there's something uh, seriously wrong with what we do or how we pronounce that's that's um, that's possible, possibly one of the reasons. Then uh, the an another reason could be another reason could be that in when we write, this is about speaking. So saw so, and saw so, another word maybe jaw. So as in judge and then Jew, we or another jaw in English. We have three jaws in English. We have two in Odia, Bargyaja and Abargyaja. So two two in Odia, three in English. So three in English, three in Odia, two in English. 
but somehow we we don't make much of a distinction between uh, when it comes to using them uh, in in individual cases isolated cases in context or in a uh, in a connected speech also and uh, that's because we somehow managed to do that and and it's 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 okay it may not be perfect may not be right but it's not wrong people say it's, it's fine it's okay as long as i get you as long as you i understand what you say it's fine it's okay with that so therefore even even a small sound like let's say for f f for as in as in let's say fish or or uh, in odia we have we have let's say uh, for for that's that's for is different that's a father we say that's why in odia uh, we say or bengali also odisha bihar bengal we assam we say father we don't say father right that's that's because that's because we have been trained to use that that for sound that's for sound and that's how that interferes with the english and we do not make a distinction between that for and this this uh, for as in father that 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 for as in let's say let's say fountain or no in odia word let's say let's say any any word in odia let's say let's say a foca for instance okay no? so there there that a for is different and this this for is different as in fish or form or foundation or formal but then we don't make a distinction as long as we manage to convey because one of the again one of the purposes of of any language is to communicate as long as we succeed in communicating as long as we uh, convey our message to the other person it's okay it's fine nobody nobody finds fault with that uh, and and uh, the purpose is served if we we want to say something we say something people get it and that's it that's it we stop at that but then since we are doing ma english ba english some of you i also was told are ba english honors and some of you are ma english also we can't afford to do that if we are doing english as a language study right since since we are uh, since we are studying english language and literature as a course it's is incumbent on us to to make sure that at least we don't make, make mistakes we may not stop people from making mistakes that's a different thing somebody might pull pull us by the collar and then say who are you to do this to me this is a tongue i was born with i have lived with this for 40 years 50 years and uh, you are telling me now at the end of 50 years or 55 years that uh, my english is flawed uh, that's that's okay we are not going to fix people's problems unless uh, we are offered to right uh, it, on on solicited we should not you you cannot go and call everybody shout at everybody walking along the street or or uh, standing at a, a grocery shop or shopping at a mall to say come on guys i'll i'll find fault with your english and then fix your english nobody will listen to that and people will pelt stones on you we don't want that we are doing english we are learning english first thing is to is to be aware of where how it should be done how it should be pronounced how it should be used and all those and then when it comes when chances come when chances are offered to us we will fix that problem when we become a teacher when we become an administrator when it comes to our job of, of people fixing problems uh, solicited of course i am still telling it's solicited on solicited you cannot do that you should not do that somebody along going walking along the road you cannot pull him by the Uh, to your side you can call him aside and then say well i heard you say something but then that's 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 uh, terribly uh, wrong just awfully bad you, your english is awful uh, look at look at my english uh, we will we will, we have been doing english uh, as a program as a masters program from osou and this is what i have learned from uh, our resource persons and i'll fix your english now come here nobody will listen to that people will say go to hell i i am okay with my language whatever i speak whatever in whatever manner i speak i am okay with that why who the hell are you to fix my english and to to tell me that my english is awful right so let's let's not get into that the primary purpose is to learn is to learn good english is to learn english well and once we learn once we are equipped with with a skill with an with a language with a subject with a with an expertise then then okay then when when our turn comes we we will we'll try to fix them we we'll try to improve them we, we will try to influence people right so that's that's a mother tongue uh, influence right it and I, one example i've given you here is mti gets noticed when we are learning another language in case in this case english and people from the north india for instance punjab punjab and delhi and all those uh, they the hindi gets 
it's not only with regard to the word or the sound. I'm talking of everything in its entirety. It can be word, it can be sound, individual sounds. We call them phonemes. It can be allophones. It can be it can be accent. It can be in a connected speech. It can be uh, uh, it can be intonation. So depend depending on on the language that uh, we are born with, that will influence the English, and therefore uh, you will have variety of English. Uh, in fact, in fact, uh, the other day I was giving you an example of in English, India alone we have around. 2794 96 languages right of course those are dialects also that they include dialects also because languages are only 22 those which are recognized by our constitution in the eighth schedule <coughs> in the hindi the state language english is the official uh, associate official language in addition to hindi people are also allowed to use english so that's associate official language and there are 21 other languages like uh, odia bihari Odia, Bengali, Assami, Ahomia, and then Punjabi and all those. Konkani and other things. Those are languages. Uh, and there are dialects also. In Odia, for in Odisha, for instance, we have dialects. We have Sambalpuri dialect. Now in, in western part of Odisha, Sambalpur, Balangir, Palani, and all those, we use a dialect called uh, Kosli, like Kosli Vasa. Now that's a that's a dialect. That's what I, now of course people are people are fighting for it, and then a lot of movements have been going on to make uh, to get this language, to get this direct a, the recognition of a language. That's a political decision that may happen, may not happen. That's a different thing. That's not our uh, problem, our issue now. As long as we use that language, as long as we speak that language, that's OK. So uh, dialects, languages and dialects put together, we have 2,796 alone in India. And uh, across the globe, we have 6,000 languages. That also includes dialects. Now, out of those 6,000 languages, or 2,796 languages in India alone, uh, only only language that we speak, all of us are common, all of us have, have common in is English. Because I speak Odia, you, somebody else speaks Bengali, somebody else speaks Malayalam. I'm, I, I'm not okay with that, that. Therefore, some language has to be common to all of us, where we, when we talk to us, when we talk to each other, when we communicate with each other in a forum, in a, in a place, in a class, uh, or in any any mm, social uh, context, one language that binds all of us together is English, and and uh, this interference of the mother tongue cannot help us if the if the mother tongue influences the language that we speak, the English that we speak, that will again have a bearing in the English we speak, and that also will have a bearing, an adverse bearing, adverse effect effect on the language you speak, and then that might. Uh, make the other person put off. So uh, let's let's try to. Uh, so first thing is we must understand the problem first. First, whether there's a problem at all. Yes, we know there's a problem. That's mother tongue influence. In my mother tongue, Odia influences my target language, English. So let's let's acknowledge, let's accept, let's know that there's a problem. Okay. Once we know the problem, then the second stage is to identify the solutions. How do I get rid of them? Now, uh, whether it's it's partially. Uh, whether I need to do it partially, whether I can do it fully, whether whether sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Uh, so all those modalities and modus operandi and all those that we need to understand and appreciate, and, and that those that understanding and those appreciations also have uh, have to be taken into account, keeping in mind, keeping uh, uh, the the following things in mind. One is the context in which we use, whether it's uh, Official, it's private, it's personal, it's social, it's communal. In in my society, at my home, in office, so all those depending on in office if it's a necessity. Because if if you have uh, if you have seen those IS officers and deputations who come to Odisha, for instance, as as commissioners, as chief secretary, as special relief commissioners, and all those, they are one of the requirements is that they must be speaking in the language of the state. So that's why meetings and all those, if you have seen now, uh, these days, we have every day, there is some press briefing or the other going on. And these people, these uh, IS officers, senior bureaucrats and all those, including DG, IEG and all those, they speak Odia. It may be broken, it may not be perfect, it may not be the way we speak, but that's fine. That's fine. As long as they, 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 they speak, that's okay. At least they have made an effort. They have made a conscious effort to learn the language. Uh, may not be as fluent uh, as their mother tongue, may not be as fluent as we speak our um, speak Odia, but that's, that's uh, all right as long as they succeed in communicating something. 
So that, that requirement is there. You have to speak the language of the people that you are serving. So, and therefore in that, in the area that they speak, the, in, in our language that they speak in press conferences and press briefings, you will have noticed, if you haven't noticed, today also you see every day, four o'clock, there's a press briefing by the IS officers, the special relief commissioners, and then chief secretary, health secretary, uh, principal secretary, all those. So when they, when they speak, uh, because they are not born with Uriya tongue, they were born with something else. Somebody is a Malayalam, for instance, our 5T secretary. 5T secretary is from, uh, must be from Malayalam, must be from Kerala, right, Pandian. So he, he, when he speaks English, when he speaks Uriya, uh, is bound to have his influence, that Malayalam influence in Uriya. And so we, 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 we notice that, we observe that, but that's, that's right, that's all right, because we at least understand he, he can convey something that, okay, uh, there were 146 cases of COVID in Odisha today, right? All we need is the number, extra child is 146 COVID, right, COVID cases so, in Odisha. But that's it. Other things, other things we can always manage. That's not a big deal. Now coming to the second uh, issue, second thing. So first thing is that we identify the problem. We know what it is. We appreciate and acknowledge that there's a problem. And therefore, the second thing is that we should be able to, we should be willing to fix that. No? Next, our willingness should be there. We should be agreeable to fix the problem. Identifying the problem is not enough. Everybody can identify, everybody can tell that this is my problem. But you should be willing to do that. You should be willing to go the extra mile to fix that problem. You should be willing to, you should be accommodating to, to help, accommodating in helping somebody to fix your problem. So then the reasons, why, why does MTI happen? Right from the birth to growing up, we speak our mother tongue. Because we have been using the mother tongue very com comfortably, conveniently, all our lives, and therefore we are comfortable there. Second thing, when we speak the mother tongue on a daily basis, the pattern and tone set hard in our brain. And, and something that, that is set in the brain is, is so hard to get rid of. It's, it's only set in the brain. And, and for a long, long, it's like, it's like if you have left a house uh, unoccupied for months, you would have a layer of dust gathered on the floor and all the surfaces. Because, because nobody would have broomed that house, nobody would have cleaned that house, and therefore you would have a, lo a lot of dust settling on every single surface, including the floor or furniture or anything, TV, whatever you have. So that's how in this case, the mother tongue also sets in the brain and it's hard to go. It's, it's almost like, uh, it's almost like as, as, as dash as grease or, or as dash as mule or as dash as, as uh, doornail, uh, as hard or, uh, so when, when it, it doesn't move, it, it doesn't go, it doesn't go easily. Then uh, third thing is when we, uh, this, this effect uh, grows further when we grow up and find it hard to speak fluent English. As we grow up, the, the learning of the other language also, the, uh, over the acquisition of the mother tongue, that also becomes difficult. As we grow old, uh, the, the older we grow, the more difficult it becomes for us to learn another language. And so when we speak English, influence of a mother tongue is distinct, it's very clear. It's, it's, it's so clear that anybody can make out telling, okay, you are, you are speaking uh, English, which is uh, tinged with Odia. If you speak to somebody uh, whose mother tongue is not Odia, uh, somebody from outside, he or she will be able to understand that uh, your, your English is tinged with Odia. Similarly, when you also identify somebody, a Bengali English speaker or a Malayalam English speaker, you know that, okay, your English uh, has, has uh, this influence of your mother tongue. Right, that's, that's a common phenomenon. There's nothing to be offensive about it or shameful about it. It's okay, it's a natural process. All of us have that and therefore nothing to be proud of or nothing to be uh, shamed of. Uh, and and uh, there's no shame in, in speaking one's mother tongue. There's no shame in, in using one's mother tongue. That, that's always, uh, it's, it's always a pride in using one's mother tongue. Only problem is while English, while using English, while speaking English, we should not mm, make Oriya overpower English. That's it. That's, uh, we are not being aspirational. We are not asking for the moon. We are not asking you to, to get rid of Odia, to, to 
stay away from Odia and then use only English. Nobody is doing that. Nobody does that. Now, reasons behind, uh, some more reasons behind MTI. You have not heard enough English. We, we are not exposed to English in our younger days when we were kids. We didn't have enough exposure to English. We didn't, we never heard BBC. We never heard the Voice of America. We never watched English movies and therefore exposure was minimal. Second thing, we haven't spoken enough. Uh, we don't speak, we didn't speak when we were kids, either because it was not necessary, it was not felt necessary, or because we were scared that people would laugh at us. Oh, if I speak this, uh, if I speak English, people will laugh at me, people will laugh at my expense, and, and whatever little uh, prestige or name and fame I have earned over the years, brick by brick, will go to dogs. Therefore, I will not rather speak English. That's how we resisted speaking English. Third thing is we have not corrected enough. Even when we spoke, even when we heard somebody speak, speak English, we never made a conscious effort to fix that, to correct that. Either because we were scared that why should I correct? It's not my problem anyway. Or we didn't correct our own English because we said, if I'm able to manage with this, if I'm able to survive with this, if I'm able to pull along my day-to-day -day activity with whatever English I know, what's the need of learning more? So that's fine. We, we are satisfied with whatever we have. That's three. Fourth thing is widespread adoption. We, we, we adopt the language, the Odia, or in our, case, in, in our case, Odia, or any mother tongue for that matter, anybody would have done that. We adopt that language, and therefore, it's wide. Everybody uses that. And fifth is uniformity. We, we have a uniformity in using uh, our language everywhere, wherever we use, with, with regard to English, with regard to whatever context, in whichever case, it's uniform. It's more or less uniform. To a large extent, it's uniform. Some exceptions may be there, here and there. Those are bound to be there. That's uh, uh, all right. Then how does MTI develop? MTI develops, uh, how, uh, we have another 10 minutes to go. Hello? Oh. Yes, okay, sir. Good. Uh, and we'll leave for leave maybe five minutes for questions answers. Yeah, sure, sure, sir. Okay, great, wow. great. Thank you. Heba uh, or Ananya? It's Heba, sir. Heba, okay. Ananya went for some meeting or something, she told me. Okay. Uh, so how does MTI develop? Large number of vernacular medium schools, local local medium schools, Odia medium schools, vernacular medium schools, in Tamil Nadu is Tamil, in Andhra Pradesh is Telugu, in Karnataka is Kannada. So those vernacular medium schools, now of course, thankfully, we have English medium schools opening up, public schools opening up, and this problem is not as glaring as it used to be when we were kids. Now you're, you have better times, you have better infrastructure, better uh, exposure, and therefore you won't have that problem. On top of that, you are also doing MA English, be English, I'm English, and your problems with, will not be uh, as, as daunting as it used to be with us when we were kids uh, 40 years ago, let's say, right? 40, 45 years ago. So a large number of vernacular medium schools. Second thing is children are introduced to English at a later stage. You, you, we don't, uh, we never studied English at grade one or two. We started learning English at grade five, and uh, that also the broken English, maybe just A through G and all those. And only when we went to high school, uh, we had some English some English text that also they would teach in Odia. Everything in Odia, including English. Mathematics also in Odia, uh, social, social sciences also in Odia, sciences also in Odia, and English also in Odia. And that's how that exposure was limited. In, in uh, these days, it's okay, it's fine. No, nobody, uh, no, no school, including a vernacular medium school, local schools also, they, I, I think they are all public schools, medium, English medium schools. Then third, difficult to get over the internalized sounds. We have internalized the mother tongue so hard, it has almost become a part of the DNA. Uh, it's, it's, it has become a part of the blood. And therefore, we, we find it hard to get rid of that, to get over the language that has been internalized, that has been, that has been uh, a part of the blood, a part of culture, a part of our DNA. And fourth is, of course, the lack of exposure to English. Because we, we didn't have too much to... Uh, much of exposure to English, we tended to use this MTI. Some reasons behind, some more reasons again, not spoken, not communicating with English speaking people, avoid English speaking classes, and those are now reducing mother tongue influence. How do we do that? These are once you identify the problems, the steps we know that these are, this is where we are having problems. We are sure that these are the problems, and we also know that these are the areas where we have problems. Next, 
logical stage or step is to is to identify is to understand is to know is to apply how to uh, reduce that influence i i am still uh, reinforcing that we cannot eliminate we are we, we should try to reduce reduce mother tongue influence elimination is a long process that will take a lot of time that uh, we don't have we don't it's not desirable also it's fine it's okay uh, so reducing mother tongue influence learning to pronounce sounds in isolation every single sound per we should learn to produce in isolation per is, a, is an individual sound uh, in words like pin or supper or cup or, or a for as in fan or suffer or cough this is how we should learn using those sounds in uh, words in isolation number of times so it becomes becomes a part of that we say okay so it's not for it's for it's fish it's not peace so that's how we know then mute period then using writing samples lots of writing samples when you use you see that okay these words occur in these lines or in these sentences or in these writings and then when you read aloud when you go through them when you read aloud you find a pattern and then so because there are mix of mix of sounds and vowels and syllables eh, vowels and consonants and then we have uh, words that we are familiar with in our sounds we are familiar in our mother tongue those you are not familiar all those will come in a in a in an assorted manner and so once we use it for a long time we it becomes it becomes a habit so maybe maybe one month two months four weeks that's it then using writing samples full immersion you get immersed in that okay i must do this you you set a target that okay by the end of this uh, covid 19 when uh, before the lockdown is uh, lifted i must have learned this these days you would have noticed all those participants especially you would have noticed people banking on this uh, covid lockdown and then accumulating degrees and certificates all every every single one there are lots of courses being offered online for free some are offered for free some are offered for at a very nominal price coursera is one of them ellison is another then you have udemy you have lots of them they are offering courses online for free or for a, on a nominal charges but then that's because people want to upskill them. People want to learn something new. People want to utilize the time available at their disposal. Once it opens up, once the uh, Corona uh, lockdown is lifted, you won't have time. You will have to run between your office and home, and that's where it gets over. Morning, you you get up and then get ready and then go to office and then come back in the evening and then uh, switch on the TV and then uh, watch it till you go to bed. You won't have time to do anything else, which is why people are now upskilling themselves, reskilling re themselves learning something new or learning something old so all those things are happening now these two months have been have been really really uh, fruitful from one way at least though we are losing lots of human lives though people are suffering that's okay we we are we feel bad for them but then people are also doing good things they are learning relearning upskilling or learning lots of things are happening you can also uh, take part in them and then by uh, by the time your this lockdown is lifted you would have got a lot of things uh, bilingual practice practice in bilingual english and odia english and hindi hindi and odia hindi and english and that's how bilingual bilingual will help you that okay um, i i say something in odia and then translate into english and then so you know that okay these are this is how the patterns are in english it's subject verb object in odia in bengali in any other vernacular language it's subject object object and verb we say we we uh, eat rice right we eat rice subject verb object in english in bengali in odia in hindi it become hum chawar khate hain hum is we subject khate hain chawar is object and then uh, verb is eat so subject object verb in english in in other languages in english it is subject verb and object and mti and its impact on spoken english this is how it, it impacts our spoken english lacks confidence while conversing in english it's impossible to address all the accents in a class in a class of 40 you can't address the accent of every single uh, person and therefore that impacts the spoken english then manifest this manifests in the form of incorrect pronunciation we our pronunciation becomes faulty because we don't make an attempt we don't make a steady attempt to fix the problem to to learn it carefully to learn it well three things to learn to learn it carefully or consistently and learn it well and then inappropriate uh, pronunciation samples that fossilized sound systems of learners mother tongue inhibits the acquisition 
ways to remove MTI. This is the last uh, slide, and then I'll leave the floor open for uh, you to ask questions or doubts, or maybe you can leave your questions on the chat box, and I'll try to respond to them, maybe another five minutes or so. Uh, ways to remove MTI. This is how we can remove our MTI. First thing is practice tongue twisters to improve focus while speaking English. She sells seashells on the seashore. Sa and sha. You have two sounds alternately appearing in this tongue twister. If you use it over and over again, like when you exercise, when you do some physical exercise, our hands and legs and body gets exercise and then we get the tone, muscle tone, we get the texture and all those. Similarly, when you use your tongue, tongue also is a is an organ, organ of speech, by the way, is an organ, active organ, most active organ, by the way, uh, when we speak, so it gets exercise. The more you use your tongue to use tongue twisters, the more exercise it gets. Uh, uh, that's how it becomes, uh, uh, it, it doesn't become stiff. From the stiffness, it comes out and becomes flexible. And the more flexible your tongue is, the better your language will be, including English, not only English, any language. But since we are talking of a target language, I'm talking of English. Any language you learn, any new language you learn, including uh, Canada. If you learn Canada, if you learn Telugu, if you learn German or, or French or Spanish, the same, same effort. Only advantage is because in our mother tongue, uh, these, these languages that uh, maybe Telugu or Tamil or Hindi or, or Canada, because we are familiar, they are a part of our own culture or cultural setup, we might be a little more comfortable. But otherwise, otherwise, the acquisition of a language and learning of a language principles are same. We acquire a mother tongue or the first tongue, first language, we learn another language, we learn a second language or a third language. Uh, it can be English, it can be Hindi, it can be anything. So that way, tongue twisters are one. Practicing tongue twisters, lots of them, if you do it yourself, it it will make your tongue flexible. It will give you that flexibility to use your tongue at your will. If the tongue is your part, your a part of your mouth, your oral system, your uh, 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 in the oral cavity, it's, it's one of the most dominant instruments in addition to, of course, eating and tasting. That's the other function of tongue. But as far as speech is concerned, language is concerned, tongue is the most active uh, organ. And therefore, you should give it lots of practice and exercises. The more exercises you give to tongue, the better it becomes, the better equipped it becomes to give you the desired sounds and accent also. Second thing, read text aloud and note down the words that you pronounce incorrectly. When you read aloud something and then you notice, you yourself will be able to notice that, oh, this word I mispronounced, this sound was not right, that accent was wrong, that, that uh, word was not accented properly. Even though it was a verb, I put the stress on the first syllable, which is wrong. You know that. And once you identify the problems, you, you yourself acknowledge and you grade yourself and then say, OK, these are the out of these 20 words. When I read them aloud, out of 20, four of them I mispronounced they, with regard to this sound, with regard to that accent, with regard to this flow. And therefore, you identify the problems and then go on practicing them. Three, listen to podcasts to observe and understand correct sound. So some BBC or some, some YouTubes, some standard YouTubes, uh, YouTube lectures and videos and all those. When you watch, when you listen to them, your ears get tuned to that English. So Simon Sinek, for instance, is another man, is one man, Simon Sinek. Or another, maybe Sachi Tharoor. Or one more, maybe uh, Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs, one, uh, I, th I think it was in Harvard. Harvard uh, commencement speech, beautiful. So once you listen to those, those tapes, you, your ears get used to uh, English they speak, the English they speak, and therefore, the more you listen, the more uh, adapted your ears will become to the, that language uh, in, in terms of fluency, accuracy, and other things, and then you get used to that. Uh, listen to podcasts, and listen to an English news channel, so something like BBC or Voice of America or something, and your ears will get used to that. And initially, you may find it difficult to understand, uh, appreciate, but okay, it's it's always uh, good to uh, try something new, try to learn something new. It may take time. It may not be, it may not give you dividends instantaneously, uh, but that's, that's all right. That's fine. And uh, watch English movies and listen to English songs, find out how native speakers speak, and then join spoken English classes and re record yourself speaking English to find out 
which words you pronounce. So um, every every these days mobile smartphones have also these features. So you can record your own tape. You speak something, put it on the record board, and later when you are alone, listen to that and then see where you went wrong or where you could have improved or why it was not as perfect as you desired it to be. Though you wish to be uh, wish to give a lecture to speak as as fluently as well as a native speaker does. And uh, one day you will come very close to a native speaker's English. Uh, there is, there is, they are not, they are not themselves or angels that have dropped from heavens. They are also like one, one of us. Only difference is they were born with that tongue. We were born with another tongue. And uh, like nobody can beat us in our own mother tongue. They also are unbeatable. They think they are unbeatable in their mother tongue. But every everybody has some strengths or some weaknesses, and uh, as long as we uh, understand our SWOT, we make an analysis of our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. That's uh, the, that's that's the beginning. That's how we start. So I know that this is my strength. My strength is my mother tongue. I can speak very well in English in my mother tongue. Opportunity uh, then W weaknesses. My pronunciation is wrong. I falter. I can't speak or as fluently as accurately as somebody does. Opportunities, yes, I have opportunity to learn because I have everything available uh, on my mobile. I can listen to uh, tapes, I can listen to, I can watch uh, YouTube videos, I can listen to lectures, and I can get used to MP3. I can get uh, practice as and when I want. I don't, don't even have to sit at a place at a formal setting of one hour, 60 minutes, uh, and then sit. I can even, while playing, while jogging, while, while uh, walking along the street also, I still can do that. So that's, those are opportunities. Threats are that okay, it may take time. It may not be as perfect as a native speaker uh, has, but uh, that's all right. In course of time, I will give myself a deadline that okay, by the end of this month, by the end of this uh, uh, COVID uh, lockdown, I will have learned this. I will, I will learn how to speak English well, how to pronounce these words well, how to fix my pronunciation problem. How to, so that's it. Let's, let's give a, uh, let's give a, uh, a deadline to each one of us telling this is where and we should stretch ourselves to limit push ourselves to limit telling yes i can i will do it whatever it takes to learn english to make my english perfect to make sure that my english comes up to some level some tolerable level okay i'll give myself uh, i'll push myself to the limit this, this is limit eight hours a day 10 hours a day 18 hours a day that's all right i'll do that i'll do whatever it takes to learn english well not only learn learning we are doing anyway learn well Right. Okay, that's all for today then. Thank you. Thanks a lot, sir, for such a wonderful lecture. And uh, participants too have appreciated the very lecture pattern. And Thank hopefully you. they might have attained their command over the mother tongue influence and they would be able to speak in a proper manner. Normally, they too have a questions regarding how they would be able to speak English in a proper way. And the very concept of taking into account the syntax pattern. And in and for the, and in future lectures too, we will be continuing with the TG grammar, hopefully transformative grammar, so that it will be quite helpful regarding the Noam Chomsky concept. So it would be quite helpful for them to learn the grammar in a proper way and in a different way. So I would request the learner. One learner is asking a question regarding uh, how can we. Uh, she is saying that how can we simplify the understanding? What is syllable she is asking directly? Yeah, sir. Uh, what yeah. is syllable? She's asking. Okay, syllable. Syllable is one of the smallest units of of language. It's like a it's like a brick. It's the smallest unit of a building. So a building block. So a letter is the smallest unit, by the way. But in linguistic in linguistics and phonetics, syllable is the smallest unit of language. Uh, a couple of one or more syllables form words, and then words form sentences. Sentences form paragraphs, and they form uh, essays and novels. So they are the, that's the smallest unit of language. So in a, in a word like table, T is a, uh, in a word like, let's say, university, U is a syllable, Ni is a syllable, V is a syllable, and C, T are syllables. So that's it. Yes, sir. Uh, this was the question that was asked. So I would request uh, uh, the participants to kindly one by one unmute your mic and if you are having any queries please do directly interact with the resource person right please do interact with the resource person regarding your queries as you haven't yet written any questions so i would request you 
if they have not written any questions, there are two issues. Either they have understood everything or they haven't got any. <laughs> yeah, they might have understood everything, sir. <laughs> it was fine. <laughs> uh, great, thank you. So, learners, if you aren't having any queries, then we can wind up the session. Okay, thank you. I yeah. we have another lecture on fourth, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Regarding the syntax and oh, that syntax and all that. Yeah. Mm. So th thank you, sir. Thank you, participants, for participating, and I would like to thank the technical team for have for supporting us. Uh, yeah, and uh, I would like to thank our resource person for in, for giving us this valuable lecture on the. Um, taking into consideration the mother tongue influence, that's a real big issue that the people normally face. Mm. And it was right, quite very helpful for the participants too. So we hope to see you in the further lecture. And thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. This internet connection isn't stable at the moment. Ah, mama. Eh, class bondhla kanti bondhla hai. Ek kendra kurdla je. Google Meet. Class bondhla.